Over the icy badlands of Alberta, Canada, there once lived a giant flying monster that would have soared over the heads of the dinosaurs that lived there during the Cretaceous period. And perhaps, like many of its close relatives, spent a lot of time lumbering on the ground in search of food as well. Only recently named, this Canadian pterosaur was a member of the funny giraffe-shaped pterosaurs, the Asdarkids, known for being mostly head and neck. The Asdarkids were once poorly understood, and only known from scant remains, but over the past few decades, more and more of these creatures are being discovered, showing they lived in all sorts of different habitats in different places around the world. And this newly discovered pterosaur continues the trend, showing these animals once occupied the far north. Due to where these fossils were discovered, it was named Cryodracon Boreas, or the frozen dragon of the north winds. The skeleton that Cryodracon was named from was an animal that would have stood around the same height as a human and would have had a wingspan of 5 meters. So it was a medium to large sized pterosaur, but would have been larger than any living flying bird. The team of paleontologists who described this new pterosaur named it Cryodracon because it is currently the most far north as Darkid known. It was even suggested that the species name should be Cryodracon Viserion after one of the dragons out of Game of Thrones, but eventually Boreas or North Winds was settled upon. Although Cryodracon is a great name for a Canadian pterosaur, it is only describing the modern climate of the region it was discovered in, as during the Cretaceous, southern Canada would have been a very different place to now, as 77 million years ago when Cryodracon was at large, Canada was a lot warmer. In the same rocks as the Cryodracon fossils, there are also the remains of cold-blooded animals like crocodiles. Although this does not necessarily mean that Cryodracon's habitat was tropical, as turtles and crocodiles during the Cretaceous were a lot more diverse, and could sometimes be found in colder habitats than they usually are found in today. Most estimates suggest that Cretaceous southern Canada probably had a similar climate to modern day Oregon. Alberta at this time in history was teeming with dinosaurs, and the pterosaur fossils show signs of this. The skeleton that Cryodracon was named from has scars and even an embedded tooth in it, most likely left from a dinosaur that was scavenging the creature after it had died. Specifically, it was thought to have belonged to Sauronothelestes, which is a raptor that was common in Canada during this period of time. This skeleton of Cryodracon was discovered in the 90s, and fossils from this pterosaur have actually been known from Canada since the 70s, but the fact they belong to a new pterosaur not known to science was only very recently found out. This is because at the time when they were discovered, the Asdarkids were not a very well understood group of animals. The first Asdarkid to be named was the famous and giant Quetzalcoatlus that was named in the early 70s and then not long after this, another, smaller pterosaur was discovered in Kazakhstan, named as Darko. These pterosaurs, as well as a few other scant remains found in other parts of the world, were enough to tell that there was once a whole family of pterosaurs with unusually long necks that lived during the Cretaceous, that they named as Darkids. However, they were still a very poorly understood group of animals, and so, when the first fossils of pterosaurs were found in Canada, it was thought that they belonged to the only large pterosaur known at the time, Quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatlus had a smaller species known as Quetzalcoatlus sp, that lived in what is modern day Texas, and was about the same size as the Cryodracon skeleton, so it was originally thought that Cryodracon was just another population of Quetzalcoatlus sp that lived in the north, and that these pterosaurs just had a much larger range than previously realised. The problem is that when an animal is only known from a handful of species, it is difficult to tell if their features are present throughout the family or unique to one specific member of the family. Both Cryodracon and Quetzalcoatlus were late Cretaceous pterosaurs that shared many features and were around the same size as each other, so they were thought to be the same animal because no one knew enough about these giant flying creatures to say any different. However, since the 90s, many more Asdarkids have been discovered from all over the world, with many of these animals being known from much more complete remains including some very large ones like the monstrous Hatsiagopteryx that was discovered in Romania in the early 2000s, and had some species that may have also reached Quetzalcoatlus proportions. 
This gave scientists many more fossils to study, giving a much better idea of what this large family of pterosaurs looked like and the unique features that each member of the group had. In 2019, armed with this new data, the skeleton of the pterosaur found in Alberta was re-examined and it was found that the pterosaur was very different from Quetzalcoatlus and a unique animal new to science. Although the skeleton that Cryodraken was named from was quite moderately sized, this may not have been the size limit of this pterosaur. In the same rocks where this skeleton was discovered, there is a single giant neck vertebrae that is also thought to have belonged to Cryodraken, that is around the same size as the neck of Quetzalcoatlus northropi, meaning these animals may have grown to rival the giant species of Quetzalcoatlus. If this neck vertebrae did belong to Cryodraken, it would have been able to look a giraffe in the eye while standing up straight, and would have most likely had a wingspan stretching to 10 meters, which is more than twice as large as the wandering albatross, which has the largest wingspan of any bird living today. And its wing length would have been a lot more comparable to small aircraft than any bird. The bones of most of the fossils are actually usually more robust than the fossils of comparatively sized Quetzalcoatlus. So although Cryodraken was around the same size, they may have actually been slightly heavier. But despite Cryodraken being one of the heaviest pterosaurs, it was still very light considering how big it was. Most estimates place it around 250 kilos, which is actually incredibly low for an animal that was as large as a giraffe as giraffes can weigh three times this. There are also bones of Cryodraken that are of a considerably smaller animal, about the size of an eagle, that may have been a juvenile. So Canada may have a set of fossils that show the different life stages of these pterosaurs as well. While the largest Asdarchids like Quetzalcoatlus, Hatsiagopteryx, and now also very possibly Cryodraken were likely very elegant flyers, it is thought that they actually spent a lot of time on the ground and their lifestyle may have been similar to a stork where they would fly to their hunting grounds but would only hunt while on the ground. It is thought that they lived this way because of their strangely shaped bodies that would have made them poorly suited for aerial hunting, and also, while their skull and beak combination may have been ridiculously large and disproportionate to their bodies, there is evidence that their beaks were actually not very strong, suggesting that they were better suited for snapping up prey much smaller than themselves, like reptiles or perhaps small dinosaurs. And Canada is one of the very few places in the world where you can find fossilized tracks made by Asdarkids. Turn the clock back 77 million years ago and these footprints may have been filled by a giant cryodraken on the prowl for its food. Thank you for watching. A massive thank you to all my patrons. If you enjoy videos like this, consider supporting the channel as well.